The word blessing, which we heard variations of quite a bit there, can mean a lot of things. In the American South, we make frequent use of the phrase, bless your heart, which essentially translates to God help you, and can express either sympathy or condescension, or in some cases both. And when you sneeze, it's pretty typical for someone to say, God bless you, which may be a holdover from the days of the Black Plague, when sneezing was a sign of illness and potentially imminent death. And almost every political speech nowadays ends with the declaration, God bless America. But what do we mean when we talk about being blessed by God? Now, for those of you who may not have heard, there was a football game last Sunday. It wasn't much of a game, truth be told. The commercials and the Bruno Mars concert at halftime were probably the highlights of the evening. But when the final seconds ticked off the clock, the Seattle Seahawks had won their first ever Super Bowl championship. In his comments to reporters after the game, Seattle quarterback Russell Wilson gave credit to God, saying that God is good and called the win a true, true blessing. Jennifer Hudson is a famous and talented actress and singer who broke into the spotlight during her stint on American Idol in 2004. Since her rise to fame, she has actually had quite the career. She has won an Oscar award, a Golden Globe, and a Grammy. And she's also been invited to perform at the White House for the President and First Lady. In an interview this past December, Hudson credited God for her success, saying, God chose to bless me with an acting career because I honored the gift of singing that he gave me. In 2000, Bruce Wilkinson published a book entitled The Prayer of Jabez, which became a bestseller and sold over 9 million copies. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, we find the only mention of Jabez who offers a prayer that is at the center of Wilkinson's book. It says, Jabez called on God, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from hurt and harm. And God granted what he asked. Never again in the entire canon of scripture do we encounter Jabez or a reference to Jabez. But Wilkinson managed to build a fortune on his prayer. Today, the website for the book and its numerous sequels and related resources offers this sales pitch. Are you ready to reach for the extraordinary? To ask God for abundant blessings he longs to give you? Join Dr. Bruce Wilkinson to discover how the remarkable prayer of a little-known Bible hero can release God's favor, power, and protection. You'll see how one daily prayer can help you leave the past behind and break through to the life you were meant to live. We should stop right now and all run and buy that book and just not worry about any of the rest of what we're going to do today. If that's what happens, then we need to go and get that book and pray that prayer. Clearly, in our culture, we tend to think of good things, the good things that we have, as blessings. And in contrast, if we don't have them, we're not as blessed. It's not unusual to hear an athlete or a Hollywood actor attribute their success to God's blessing. And almost as long as there's been a church, there have been ministers preaching a gospel of prosperity that equates wealth and success with God's blessing. But in his Sermon on the Mount, from which we read this morning, Jesus says that it is the poor in spirit and the mourners and the meek who are blessed. And that's a quite a far cry from the proud and the powerful and the wealthy. In the classic Monty Python film, The Life of Brian, the crowd gathered to hear Jesus' Sermon on the Mount misunderstand what he says. When Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, one person in the audience can't quite hear and asks, what did he say? To which another responds, I think he said, blessed are the cheesemakers. Cheesemakers, what's so special about them? To which another replies, well, I don't think it's meant to be taken literally. It's meant to apply to all manufacturers of dairy products. <laughs> it's funny, but it strikes a note of truth. Jesus' words are often challenging and hard to understand. And this is one of those places. When we hear them, we start trying to make them sound better in our ears, to, to make them fit better what we already want to see and hear and believe about Jesus. 
And while we thank God for what we have and for the luxuries we enjoy, we recognize that the trappings of worldly wealth and power and success are not necessarily signs of God's blessing. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus pronounces God's blessings upon such unlikely persons as the poor in spirit and the meek, which can leave us scratching our heads a little bit and, like the gathered crowd in the Monty Python version, wondering if we heard him right. Now the word translated here as blessed is related to the Hebrew word used in the psalm that we read this morning that's translated as happy, as in happy are those who fear the Lord. The connotation, though, is of happiness that derives from a right relationship with God. You'll also notice that these beatitudes, as we call them, state a blessing in the present tense and then a promise of a benefit that will only come in the future, as in blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. The point here, as biblical scholar Tom Long writes, is that the church, the community of Christ, is a joyful people. But the source of their joy is not that they live easy lives in a happy world or that things are getting better every day, but that their trust is in God's coming kingdom. Let me read that again. The church, the community of Christ, is a joyful people, but the source of their joy is not that they live easy lives in a happy world or that things are getting better every day but that their trust is in God's coming kingdom. When we look at other people around us, it can be easy to see only the good things in their lives. We see that other people have money when we don't have it. We see that other people appear to live lives free of marital problems or broken relationships with family members. We see families whose children appear to be model citizens and A-plus students. We see that everyone else is better off or happier than us. Everyone else is blessed. Maybe not everyone. I think we all probably know some folks that are worse off than we are. I firmly believe that so-called reality television is successful only because it gives even the most unhappy person a picture of someone who is more broken and worse off to help us all feel a little bit better. But the truth is that when we look at the beautiful people and the successful people and the powerful people, and the wealthy people that we are, we are often thinking, wow, they are really blessed. Because we have a tendency to see our own trials more clearly. We see our own marital problems, our own financial woes, our own struggles with anger and addiction and sickness. We see what we interpret as our own lack of blessings up close and personal. But what Jesus teaches throughout the gospel and what he underscores in particularly stunning fashion here is this, that God does not always value what the world values. God does not see as we see. When we are down and hurting and feel at our most separated from God, that is when God is closest to us. Which means that God's blessings are not experienced in more stuff or in more honor or in more success God's blessings are experienced in the peace that comes from understanding that God is in control, that God is with us, and that God's purposes are coming to reality. As Jesus says in John chapter 16, in the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. And that's good news for us, because even though we may have stuff and people may think well of us, there is a lot of brokenness and woundedness here. There is somebody here today who is struggling with depression. There is someone here who feels trapped in a job that makes them miserable. There is someone here whose marriage is in danger of failing. There is someone here who feels overwhelmed by health problems and by the impending difficult treatments. There is someone here who is burdened with an addiction, someone who struggles with grief, someone who is crippled by self-doubt. There is someone here who is facing real financial hardship. There is someone here who feels utterly alone and doesn't know where to turn. And those are not easy places to be, but they are far more common than we may want to believe. 
See, the truth is that we can all count some good in our lives, but we all carry burdens as well. As William Sloan Coffin once wrote after losing his son in a tragic car accident, the valley of the shadow of death seems so incredibly dark and unending. In a prideful way, it would be easier to walk the valley alone, nobly, head high instead of as we must, marching as the latest recruit in the world's army of the bereaved. But what I want us to hear today is that all of us, in our brokenness, in our weakness, are blessed by God. That is the good news of the Beatitudes. And like all gospel good news, we are not only comforted by it, but challenged by it as well. Because while it's comforting to know that God loves us, we really want more tangible blessings. We want strength and beauty and ease. When we look around at other people who seem to have these things, it can be easy to feel like we've been forsaken by God. But when we examine that attitude more closely, we can see an example of misplaced trust of putting our faith in more stuff and more wealth and more prestige to make us happy, when our true source of joy and peace is trust in God. You see, our ability to be happy and joyful rests in our ability to trust in that promise of the coming kingdom of God, that God is in control, that God is working through the processes of history to bring God's kingdom and to turn the world upside down. And that's really the point of all this, that we put our trust in God who loves us and walks with us and lifts us up when we feel like we can't go any further. We put our trust there because we know that in our pain and in our troubles, we are blessed by God. And that is good news. So to God be all glory, honor, power, and dominion in this world and in the world that is to come. Amen.